Member for Narakan. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Deputy Speaker, the bushfires that are still burning in East Gippsland and the North East started back in November and December and devastated many small communities as well as having a major impact across both those regions. My condolences are extended to all families and individuals directly impacted, those that lost homes, uh, infrastructure and business. My condolences also are extended to the families and friends of the five men who sadly and tragically lost their lives. These men were very valued members of their respective communities and they will be missed by, will be missed by so many people, including their family and friends. Deputy Speaker, the loss of wildlife and the damage inflicted on our natural environment is massive, but it will recover as nature's resilience once again comes to the fore. If we are going to reduce the impact of future fire events, we must do better at working with nature, with Mother Nature, rather than, stop, rather than working against her. The courage of our firefighters once again has proven to be second to none, especially our CFA volunteers. Why would any government allow or worse still facilitate the undermining of our brave CFA volunteers who once again have sacrificed so much to protect their communities. I also pay tribute to the tim our timber contractors who have assisted with the firefighting effort and clean up. Their machinery, their expertise, their local knowledge and their skill is second to none. Their industry must not be shut down. Australians are well known for their capacity to react to tragedy by supporting each other. This mateship has been on display in our impacted communities and will continue for a long time yet as the long road to recovery is travelled by those survivors. The generosity of Australians never ceases to amaze and indeed has been supported by so many people from outside this country which we will be eternally grateful for. But Deputy Speaker, the question must be asked, why are the survivors of the fires in Bunyip North and Walhalla in March and February in 2019 not receiving the same support and assistance that is currently being quite appropriately offered to the fire survivors in East Gippsland and the North East. It doesn't matter whether your home was one of 300 lost or one of 30. The impact is still the same and the difficulty of recovery is still needing the same support. Deputy Speaker, after the Bunyip and Walhalla fires, the issue of fuel and fuel reduction has been raised many times and it's happening again now with the current fires. As the Leader of the Nationals said earlier, we owe it to all those families and individuals who have lost homes, buildings, fencing, water infrastructure and businesses. We owe it to them to get, get this right. Bushfire mitigation initiatives, including fuel reduction, must become a priority for all of us in this House. We cannot allow those who are ideologically opposed to these bushfire management tools deployed, being deployed to continue to put lives at risk. Deputy Speaker, I certainly don't intend to diminish the intent of this condolence motion, but I also have to mention the disgraceful Facebook post of Environment East Gippsland member, member Jill Redwood celebrating and rejoicing at the Eden chip mill being destroyed by the fire. In stark contrast to the amazing efforts of our emergency services personnel and volunteers, they chose to politicise the event with absolutely no consideration or regard for mill management, their workers or the community that relies on the chip mill for the economic contribution it makes to the Eden, Eden region. Deputy Speaker, I also want to pay tribute to my colleagues Tim Bull and Bill Tilly for their enormous effort in doing all they could for their community and I know they will continue to be there for their communities for as long as the recovery takes. And in closing, uh, Deputy Speaker, I want to mention Andrew Clark. Andrew and his family lost everything during the Bunyip North fires in March last year. Their home, business, farm infrastructure, all gone. They have battled through since then with no income and like many of their neighbours, very little financial support from government. This has not stopped Andrew from being one of the first to arrive in Bairnsdale with 200 round bales, round bales of hay, which was delivered to a Clifton Creek farmer in desperate need of fodder. Deputy Speaker, this typifies the Australian spirit that we have seen from so many during this terrible disaster.